All right, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So uh, David Benavidez defeats Demetrius Andrade. Andrade quit in between the sixth and seventh round on his stall. Couldn't continue. He he took a, he took a bit of a beating. Fairly decent fight actually. Andrade came out. Well, first of all, how are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are doing well. Shout out to the subscribers and thanks to anybody new locked in. Welcome along. I enjoyed that fight. Um, I don't enjoy it when fighters quit. I'll talk more about that later. But um, the whole the whole card itself, I'm, I'm doing a separate uh, video on the Ergashev Matias fight, Matias Ergashev. But this fight, I picked uh, the Benavidez to win by stoppage, but I thought it would go a little bit later. 9 to 11, I think it was like a TKO. But I didn't really give Andrade much of a chance to win. I was just thinking he's not going to be able to hurt Benavidez. I was questioning whether he could ambush him or not, and he kind of didn't and did a little bit, but it wasn't, he just couldn't get his punches through often enough. He was doing okay early on, right? He was doing a lot of lateral movement and he was showing some physicality and he was he was trying to bully Benavidez a little bit. Perhaps that was the wrong game plan, but he had some success in the second round, Andrade did. You know, he was he was he was not running, but he was he was boxing okay. And then he had some flashes and he won that second round with the flurries. He wasn't able to get his uppercuts off apart from in that second round where he landed a lead uppercut, which is his signature punch. He landed it once then and he had a flurry of punches where I actually at the time thought to myself, that's not a good idea. Although he did land that uppercut. He kept throwing a lot of punches to uh, Benavidez gloves and credit to Benavidez for keeping his hands up. But I thought to myself, you're going to burn out a lot of energy by throwing a lot of unnecessary punches when they're just clearly going to land on, on Benavidez's gloves because he was going backwards at the time. He still won that round and he was looking OK. And Benavidez actually from the opening bell was looking for that back right hand, which he landed in the fourth. But as soon as Benavidez came out, he was trying to throw that looping overhand right. And he actually mixed it up with the level change. And Bubu, this is the fourth now, because I think by that time, I probably had it three to one. You could say two, two, really. But I wasn't scoring it like that. But just I watched the fight twice. I watched it back this morning. And it was fairly competitive early on. But... That punch changed everything in the fourth round for Benavidez. And like he, like I said, he's been trying to land that, you know, he must have, that must have been part of the game plan. But Boo Boo, look, he had this one shield up like that as a southpaw too, but he, the, the shot caught him right on the temple at the top of the head. And Benavidez came in, level changed, and then looped over a, a beautiful shot. And Boo Boo's eyes went into the back of his head. That really hurt him. And that took the life out of him, really. And from then on, it was, all Benavidez really, you know, he sensed, um, I said sensed blood, he smelt fear, or he smelt, obviously, Andrade was badly hurt, and you could see his body language changed, his energy wasn't quite the same, he didn't have this, he had a couple of uh, moments in the sixth, where he had a little bit of fight left in him, and let his hands go, and actually landed those uppercuts, which I said, pre-fight, I was like, I don't think those uppercuts are going to be there. And generally, they actually weren't. It was just those two periods where they landed because of the height difference. And I think because Boo Boo crouches like this, it's way harder for him to land because there's a, at least a two or three inch height disparity. And I felt like, well, uppercuts, you, you you know, you have to be right there for them. But he did land a couple, like I said, but not, not as a signature punch. It wasn't landing anywhere near enough. But Benavidez was smelling fear. And he could sense the end coming and he just walks you down. He is so good. What a performance from David Benavides. I mean, when you have somebody that tough who can take a punch, who's got the will, but his punch selection is, for me, on top of the will. And I said pre-fight, his will is what really defines him. But it's all of it together, really. His punch selection, his ability to break off uh, Andrade, land shots are after that, body shots. He was landing uppercuts, overhand right, uppercut, uppercut. I mean, it's just his punch selection and his ability to shoot shots in a tight area and counter punch as well. He wasn't really needed to do a lot of counter punches, but it is in his back pocket. Perhaps that's why Andrade wasn't so keen on uh, launching those uppercuts. But it's just a great performance from Benavidez. He's a nightmare. 
And when, like I said, when you can take someone's power and he's a bigger man, and he's a bigger man walking and Andrade down. And Emmanuel Stewart used to always say that and talk about that, especially in uh, the uh, Koto Margarita one fight, which is one of my favorite fights of all time. You know, he was saying the pressure from a bigger man. And I know they're the same weight, but Benavidez is a bigger man and he's taller. And him walking you down like that, it's just a psychological drain on you. And especially when Andrade's down here like that, his power's not getting through, you know. What do you, it's just, you succumb to that psychological pressure. And Boo Boo looked, he looked pretty in bad shape at the end of the sixth, you know, he was on the ropes. I think he took a couple more shots. He was, Benavidez was starting to land body shots. That straight right hand that he does, he has his guard up here and he just shoots a straight and it, it's like it kind of off-putting because it's very unorthodox, but it comes out of nowhere. Still landing those overhand rights, and he just twists his twists the shot in like that to get to the top of the head. Like I said, through a level change in there, uppercut. It was just a, a magnificent performance from David Benavidez, who is going to be an absolute nightmare for Canelo, and that that is the that's the fight. That has to happen. The us boxing fans have to make that put as much pressure on not just Canelo but the Canelo fans because there is absolutely no reason to not duck this guy and you know let's be honest Canelo's been avoiding him <laughs> if he, he has to fight Benavidez he has to and I've for a while now I've actually long thought um, I know Canelo could outskill him at parts but I've 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 secretly favor i haven't put it on here so you're gonna just have to believe me i thought to myself shout out to hatman too if you're watching bro i had a conversation with him a while ago maybe maybe about a year maybe just under where i just was I actually said i think i think benavidez will basically out mexican him right he's a mexican monster and i think what i mean by that is he'll be able to take canelo's power i think I think they'll be he'll be he'll be making canelo fight a lot harder than he wants to and i think down the stretch I think you're going to see a younger, fresher guy who's just got that sadistic, animalistic side in him that I don't think Canelo has. And I'm not taking anything away from Canelo at all. He's he's a he's a beast. He's a great fighter. I've been really enjoyed watching him. I'm just saying at that time, where does your desire live in round ten if you still got this monster breathing down you? He's a he's a bigger man. I know Canelo's stocky and solid too, but again, it's that it's that size of the man. Look how dejected. Canelo was against Bivol. Different fighter, I know, but there was that, there was that, ugh, this guy's a bigger guy, that element. Will that happen in the, if he fights Benavidez? Will he fight Benavidez? What do you think? He absolutely should fight Benavidez. That is a massive fight. <laughs> that is a huge fight for Mexico. What a fight. Both great fighters, by the way. It's just for, uh, for us boxing fans. I'm a boxing fan, right? I'm not getting into the whole fanboy thing. I just love the sport, and that is one of the the sport's best fights for me, stylistically, for the country, for the sport, for the just the spectacle on Cinco de Mayo or even September 16th. I think it is that they do that Mexican Independence Day. Wow, mega fight! That that has to happen. And De Benavides has done everything he can to make that happen. It's just like Canelo. That would be a major duck. <laughs> He's, I'm still trying to do this video on ducking. I've just got this, the fight up here now. And I just saw that punch. Well, Boo Boo's eyes went to the back of his head. Look, let's talk about the quitting bit. I, I've long said on here, I, I really can't stand fighters that quit. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be some backlash from that, but it is what it is. And Boo Boo came out with a lot of excuses after the fight. I did feel for him, do you know what I mean? He took a beating and you could tell he sounded like he was tearing up a little bit. So I'm not trying to put the guy down, but I'll say this about quitting, right? I'm not going to go into him as hard as I normally do. Because I, I, people, if you do watch my channel, I feel very strongly about it. I'm going to do an Ergashev video. And that's that, that one was even worse. But look, think about it like this, right? If you, if you are Boo Boo, right? What would you, what would you rather do? Looking back in five years from now, when he's probably not in the sport anymore, I know he's on the back end of his career anyway. But let's just say, looking back five years from now, in that moment of weakness that he had, 
Because look at the look at Virgil Ortiz, for example, right? When that moment of weakness he had against Maidana, he never really recovered from that psychologically. And there was always that that stigma around him where he really did quit. That was a bad one. But a different fight as well. But I'm just saying for this, if you're like looking back and think, man, I wish I could have had that moment back. I wish I could have just gone out there. And then the ref, the ref had already said to him, look, we, we can't have another round like that. You re realistically, look, it's not, people might say, well, how, how can you be so callous and send him out there to take more of a beating? It's a fight <laughs> at the end of the day. It's a fight. It's not like he was like getting absolutely battered. Yes, he was getting beaten up. Yes, he was getting bullied. Absolutely. But that's what we expected. But my point is, I think he would have rather looked back throughout history, given his career two-time world champion and against the Mexican monster, who, who then just landed a couple more shots and you, you, you just couldn't take it and the ref stops it, rather than you stopping it. Which would you rather be? I mean, it's just a no-brainer. You're going to have that blemish stain on your record forever. And that is... That is where I'm just I'm trying to help, help him out. <laughs> Don't quit. Because it could live with you forever. That moment of weakness could haunt him forever. And, you know, that's why I feel strongly about it. Because I really, it's for the best interest of the fighter. Same with Ergashev too. I'm going to do, like I said, a separate video on that. I'm going to do a very similar explanation. Because what, what, how he quit and what he represented and who he represented and who you know the 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 passion that, that country has and that part of the world for winning and being glorious in victory and being you know a warrior queen's not being a warrior but look, let me know your thoughts and i appreciate anybody tuned in and you know if you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you are new hit the subscribe button i've got loads of videos shout out to all the new subscribers thank you very much for tuning in and thank you for choosing my content i really appreciate it. i've got loads of videos coming be 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 before now and christmas i'm going to go in and you're going to get so much content i can't wait to get it out um but you know there's a few projects i've been working on and sometimes when i say what's coming out <laughs> i often don't get them out but i've been working on them and i'm just behind the scenes trying to get as much great content and get better and better and better and take this channel to a new stratosphere come the end of 2024 and working on a 2023 highlight reel extravaganza <laughs> i actually got a copyright strike last night damn Man, I slipped a little bit, bro, to be honest. I was slipping. I got I got the Ergashev uh, Matias, the highlights up, right? And I just put the highlights out with a, with a bit of music background. Schoolboy error. Came back with a copyright strike, rightfully so. And I'm gutted because I I, I deserved that. I should have been... Uh, usually the fair, fair use is when you can use uh, someone's, you know, content. And I'm very... Uh, respectful of people's content usually but I just thought I'd uh, put a quick short out and it backfired I haven't had a copyright strike before so I've got to take it easy um, anyway look again gratitude to everybody if you made it this far as well shout out to you stick around for my Ergoshev video that's coming up shortly as well peace and love have a great weekend the rest of it and then enjoy the rest of your week as well see you later boxing, boxing.